All right, girls, let me get last night's Potomac on out the way. Trying to catch up on these videos, honey. Let's see. Ashley saging everything but her hairline. I just, I know I got a little squiggly something going on right here. But, honey, Ashley's hairline goes down right here and up right here. It's like sus. S-U-S. Not even sis. Sus. No, ma'am. Stop wearing these pullback hairstyles. Put the, put the, swoop the, swoop, baby. <laughs> swoop. Don't, don't let me get in them. My salt and peppers. Um, she's saging, trying to come up with some good energy, honey. They got an interview to do on the local news. I'm like, who really cares that deeply? But they had them on the local news to talk about uh, Michael's booty grabbing. Booty grabbing. Um, Raven, who was Karen and Ray's daughter, and they spell her name R-A-Y-V-E-N. Raven. Now, if your name is spelled like that, okay okay i don't like it i don't like it but that is simply my opinion that's just my opinion i you know i can't just sit here and pretend like r-a-y-v-e-n is aesthetically pleasing unto my eye because it's not pleasing unto my eye but if, if you love it that's you that's you and we'll celebrate you we sure will um she's home and she wants to be a singer i'm gonna get raven and karen out the way okay Raven uh, sang at her grandmama's funeral and it blessed Karen's soul. Oh, it, it touched her heart. It touched her heart. And Karen said, well, I'm friends with Macy Gray. Maybe we can get Macy Gray in the studio. Now I'm going to have Macy Gray's daughter uh, paint a little mural for my home because she's a paintress. Uh -huh. And so I'm going to have my daughter, R-A-Y, Raven, um, you know, sang in the studio with Macy Gray. So they scoot on down to the studio and Macy Gray's in there looking like, you know, Dorothy Hyde or... Rosa Parks in her latter days, or probably what, you know, Minnie Jean Tricky or Elizabeth Eckford look like these days, you know, a couple of little, little Rock Nine members, or Coretta never looked like that, Coretta never had that, but uh, maybe Miss Jane Pittman, Miss Jane Pittman, if she was just a little bit lighter, Macy Gray looked, baby, she looked like a historical black figure, mm-hmm, she did, she looked like somebody who we would give, our, like, 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 like Leah Chase, uh, like somebody we would give their flowers to because they helped us in the movement. You know, like she gave wise counsel to Dr. King. Mm -hmm. She looked like Dr. King came and sat down and said, uh, Macy Gray, you know, we have these problems and these situations and I just need wise counsel. And Macy Gray sat down and said, Dr. King, let me tell you this. I've been around the block quite a few times. You know, she looked like she was probably 60, 70 years old, 70 years old when, when Dr. King was living. Macy Gray looked like she had seen some things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she's in the studio and Raven goes in there and they try to sing a little Amazing Grace and Raven does like a lot of these young kids do who have no vocal training. She was singing too hard and too fast and all her air, all her her, her diaphragm was just, just pushing that air. She just was singing too hard and too fast and trying to give you a little, ooh, a little run and it just didn't, didn't come together for me, but we appreciate Raven's efforts. We appreciate Raven's efforts. At one point, Macy Gray said, stop trying to sing like everybody else. Now, you know, sing like Raven, R-A-Y-V-E-N. And Raven said, oh, that's a lot of pressure. I said, it's a lot of pressure to sing like you. All right. All right. Anywho, so Raven finally sang a little bit better, you know, and they laid a couple uh, a couple different harmonies and, 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 and got a little song, a little piece of Amazing Grace. On, on a recording, on an MP3 somewhere, it's probably on Karen's iPod. Because you know she still got the iPod. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, that was pretty much Karen and Raven for the episode. Moving along, Giselle is at the house. She watching an interview with Popcorn because she messy. Now, I ain't going to say I've never watched an interview with Popcorn because I, I often sit down and catch the uh, Whitney Houston, Diane Sawyer interview with a little piece of popcorn. I do that regularly. Or the Whitney Houston, uh, Wendy Williams interview or the Judge Mathis uh, Wendy Williams interview. All of those are great with a little side of popcorn. They're wonderful. It's like dinner theater. Um, so I'm not going to shade her for being messy in that way. Not this time. Not this time, because I, I also am messy in that very way. Sure am. Um, Robin. Robin's in the kitchen, honey. She's popping the cork on some wine, girl. And Juan comes to the kitchen. Robin got a couple friends in there. Juan comes to the kitchen and says, you look tall, Robin. You got on heels. She says, well, yes, I do have on heels. So you're not used to seeing me in heels. I said, Robin has on heels for the girls. Robin has on heels for the girls. Robin don't wear heels for her man because 
they boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I laid myself out with that one. Uh, but when Robin gets with the girls, Robin seems like the type of bisexual that when she's dating a man, she's gonna give you that Aaliyah, you know, tomboy tea, but then when she's dating a woman, she's going to give you, you know, Grace Kelly, <laughs> you know, demure, you know, snatched beauty. She seems like that kind of girl. To me. To me. Anyway, um, oh, I'm in a messy mood today. Can you tell? Yes, you can. After the way I went on, the, <laughs> you know, makes it great for 20 minutes. Um, at some point, they was talking about how Giselle kind of wanted to have a threesome with <laughs> Robin and Juan. And I was like, why would you ever want to share Robin? After all y'all been doing for all these years together solo, you want to bring Juan into this? I mean, he is handsome. He's a very cute boy. He is. But why? <laughs> is Robin not enough for you? Anyway, um, Katie also was mentioned. Uh, Giselle said Juan has to choose between uh, Katie and Giselle for the threesome. I think we all know Juan would choose Katie. I think we all know. Do we not all, if, if you think Juan would choose Giselle, do, do type it in the comment. Ty, type who you think Juan would choose. I think he would choose Katie. Because Katie seems like she would have more activity than even Robin and definitely Giselle. Mm -hmm. Katie seems like she would do a little more. Have a, have a little more activity, a little more fun. Like her foot is over there, but her hands are over there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, anywho. Um, at some point they talked about Ashley. I didn't care though. Sure didn't. Sure didn't. Um, Monique is in the studio laying down a track for a podcast I didn't know she had. And don't plan on listening to, but we support her, uh, by saying we support her. Best I can do. Best I can do. I can give her a hand clap of praise. Yes, you go, Monique, you go. Speaking of podcasts, my mother and I do a weekly podcast called uh, Petty and the Particular Podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Anchor. And Anchor. Um, anywho, while she's laying laying down the track, honey, in the studio making her some beats, as Nene would say, Ashley and her ponytail come on in. And once again, Ashley's headline is giving you a swoop down and a swoop way up swoop way up and they sit down and they start talking about Michael and the booty grabbing thing that I'm sick of hearing about and uh, Monique and the pregnancy thing that I'm sick of, sick of hearing about and I'm sitting here trying to figure out if Monique is trying to be such a friend to Ashley and carry her along on this pregnancy journey why was she not at the sonogram party with everybody else this your good good girlfriend and you want her to have this baby and y'all champion each, each other in your pregnancies but you didn't bring her with you for your sonogram. All right. So at some point, Monique says that Tandis says that Monique is just as messy and is, is reveling in the foolishness just as much as the other girls. And Monique says, no, I'm not. I can show you the text messages to prove it. But the text messages didn't prove anything to me except, yes, you are uh, marveling and reveling in the foolishness because, and I don't know if anybody caught this but me, she showed the text messages and it was a link and then Candace saying, I knew it, I was absolutely right and blah, blah, blah. And the focus was supposed to be, from Monique's perspective, the focus was supposed to be on Candace saying how right she was and marveling in the foolishness. But my focus landed on the fact that Monique sent Candace the link about the story about Michael grabbing some booty. Monique sent the link to Tandis and Tandis responded back saying I knew it I saw it and I knew it and I'm right and blah 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 Tandis would have never gone on about that tirade about being right and marveling in it with with Monique at least if Monique hadn't sent her the link to the story about Michael grabbing booty so Monique sweetie I know you want to seem just spiritual and holy and, and out of the mess baby but I caught that I caught that and I caught the fact that you didn't invite your good, good girlfriend to the sonogram thing. I got my eye on Monique. Sure do. Um, Juan is... Juan. <laughs> Juan. Ooh, I got country for a minute there. Juan is having a birthday celebration, and it's a haunted Halloween forest party. I don't know. Everybody's invited. So Michael and Ashley are on their way, and... They're talking about how the charges have been uh, 
well the case was dismissed the case was dismissed and um they talking about it in the car girl I didn't care I didn't care they show up to the party they meet with uh Giselle Juan and, and Robin aren't there yet because they had some technical difficulties uh but they meet with 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 Giselle and Giselle first thing out of her mouth is hey no 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 charges and she wants some high fives and they go to commercial break and act like the you know Michael and Ashley aren't gonna high five her but we come back from commercial break and they just happily slap hands honey they slap hands and Michael is giving well why would that have been <laughs> charge sir because you you be grabbing booties like of people that don't want you to I don't I don't understand so they talk about that for a little while and then they go through the haunted whatever's honey and then they commune a little bit later everybody get together and they friend groups you know the boys and the girls separate and they talking now Michael and Juan had this really strange moment of hey I'm so happy you're here I'm so glad you're here and, it, 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 and, and thank you for coming it was really it felt really I felt like I was on the loop I felt like I was on the loop because they just kept saying I don't even know what was said because I was so distressed because I thought Lord did everything had started skipping I was like I was looking around trying to make sure my life wasn't going in a loop because I get nervous I got anxiety and I'd be worried that sometimes, you know, the matrix is going, <laughs> going to trip up, girl, and I'm going to be stuck in an infinite loop for the rest of my life. I'd be worried. It's a genuine fear I have. But anywho, um, I forgot to mention that Michael was going to surprise Juan at his birthday party. So when he got there, Juan was surprised. But Juan doesn't emote. Juan's not an emotional man. He's not, It wasn't going to be, I cannot believe my Michael is here. My king. Like, it wasn't going to be none of that. It was just like, oh, Michael's here. Hey, thank you for coming. Good to see you. Hand, dab, fist, snap. Like, he did the same thing with everybody. He saw Karen was here. Hey, Karen, good to see you. Hey, thanks for coming. Hey, Ashley, good to thank you. I'm so glad you made it. Hey, <laughs> you know, all the women he hugged. How you doing? Good to see you. I don't think they brought Ray because his heart might couldn't have took it, but... Everybody else, I think, was there. You know, hey, Chris, good, hey, how's it going? I don't think Monique was there because her, her water couldn't have took it. Um, and, and her Chris wasn't there because big Chris ain't going nowhere without <laughs> little Monique. Um, but everybody else seemed to have been there, and he gave everybody the same greeting. He kissed uh, Robin on her forehead, and then he kissed on the mouth, and it was just like, okay, maybe they are kind of together. It's still not my business, and I still really don't care because I still really think that Robin go with Giselle and Juan. I do. Anywho, um, so they all meet up after they go through all the scary things. And what's her face? Giselle just flat out basically asks Ashley, is Michael gay? And Ashley says, no, Michael, it's not gay. Like, she made it a point to when she said no to say he is not gay. Then nobody asked if the boy was bisexual. Nobody. Now, again, I don't care. But for the sake of this television show, you know, they made so much emphasis about he's not gay. He's not gay. He's not gay. But is the boy bisexual? Bisexual. Is he bisexual? Um, I don't, like I said, care either way. But anyway, at the end of the episode, they kind of leaked the footage of Michael grabbing the man's butt. He, you know, you hear the cameraman because everybody's like, well, where's the footage? There has to be some footage of this. And, you know, I've been saying this since like episode one. Where's the footage of the boy? Or where's the microphone, you know, audio recordings of him grabbing this man's behind? I'm not, you know, I've never denied that I think he did it, because I do think he did it, but I was waiting and looking, and where is the footage? And finally, two episodes ago, everybody started asking, well, where's the footage? Where's the footage? Where's the footage? And finally, honey, Bravo TV decided to leak the footage. And you don't see Michael do it, but you hear him, um, I guess, call the guy buddy and giggle and, um, I don't know. He sounded like he was trying to be friendly, I guess we would call it. I don't know. But he giggled, and then you hear the man um, say, don't do that. Don't do that. And then you hear Michael say, oh, okay. And, I mean, the the the, the don't do that sounded like, hey, I'm not going to play these games with you. Don't grab my butt. Like, it sounded reasonably like somebody who might have just got their butt grabbed. I mean whatever girl whatever <laughs> the case was dismissed i can't prosecute the man i think he grabbed the butt at some point karen said that she had been raped and so she she was concerned about michael's character and i kind of i sat here and kind of was going with a 
on the, like you could be concerned with his character but it felt like <laughs> two different you know it felt very different it felt very it felt like a lincoln you know a regular lincoln car and a lincoln navigator one is much bigger than the other one one's much bigger now they're both not you know they're both similar that's sim they 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 come from the same company but one is much bigger than the other one. And I was like, Karen, now, <laughs> girl, wait, wait a minute, because I don't want you to equate such a, a a huge thing with a slightly less huge thing. Don't look back here, girl. I'm a puff. My, I didn't put my hair wrap on. I ain't brushing my hair, girl. I'm just in here. We just got back from this trip out of town, honey, and I am exhausted. I'm exhausted. I am drained. Um, but yeah, it's just like Karen now. What happened to you was a very, very big thing. It was very monumental and it was a life-changing thing. I don't want you to equate that, make the, make it equal um, with a butt grab. Now, a butt grab can, can kind of, especially for a man, it, it, it can skew <laughs> the way he looks at things in life and, 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 and have him up here just upset and going through, but, no pun intended, it's still not as major. Still not as major. So I was like, Karen, I kind of, I, I see what where you're trying to go, but if you go through that door, you're not gonna make it to <laughs> to the place you was trying to make it to, because that door don't lead there. That door leads somewhere much deeper, much de deeper. But we're all questioning Michael's character. I think we are all questioning Michael's character. Anyway, girl, that was the episode. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm trying to catch up on these videos. Um, we are still praying about Pose. We're still praying. I know it comes on tomorrow, but baby, I'm praying. I know I'm two episodes behind y'all. I know. I don't know. I don't know. I ain't watched them. I just don't. I haven't felt right. I haven't felt right. And you know when I don't feel right about something, I just cut it off and never turn back. Anywho, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. That was uh, Potomac. And I will see y'all on the other side. I don't know, in the next one, whatever that may be. Oh, I still ain't done no rambling report. Maybe this evening, honey. Maybe a little later. Maybe. Anyway, peace.